Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Sunday worship. Aaron was looking for a fresh new face. This is what you got. As we continue our summer at the movies sermon series this week, we'll be welcoming Reverend Kate Wolf, pastor in the Evangelical Church in America, serving at Faith Lutheran Church, Talbot, Nebraska guest preacher this morning. We're so glad to have her with us today. Let us begin our time of worship with the call to worship. We'll give thanks to the Lord, call in God's name, make known the Lord's deeds among peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises to God. Tell of all the Lord's wonderful works glory in God's holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and God's strength. Seek the Lord's presence continually. Join now in the prayer of praise and adoration. God of purpose, you created the earth out of the formless created the world out of chaos. He made order of disorder. He set boundaries to the earth, the sky, the seas. He made everything with intention, even when we cannot feel it. But God, you have formed us out of love, even when we cannot perceive it. Oh God, you have given us wisdom to seek your ways, even when we fail to recognize it. O oh God, you have shown us your ways of justice and mercy and peace. Help us to seek you, the great creator who made the entire universe with purpose and made each of us with the intention of love. Amen. Our opening hymn today I love to tell the story.
Happy are those who fear the Lord, who walk in God's ways. We come to this time of confession, seeking to walk in God's ways, aware that we often take other paths that do not lead to abundant life. We trust God's mercy and promise to forgive as we name aloud the ways in which we have fallen short and failed to follow Jesus Christ. Let us pray the prayer of confession. Lord, you search our hearts and see the places where they are hardened and resistant to your will. In this time of much upheaval and pain, we frequently turn away from those in need, seeking our own security instead of the well-being of all creation. We let petty differences separate us from one another. We allow self-interest to overwhelm your commandment to love our neighbors. We fail to see your image evident in every person. Forgive us, we pray, and in your mercy, Redirect us so that we can once again walk in your ways. Amen. The assurance of forgiveness. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn it? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed into seats for us. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Today's reading comes from the third chapter of the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mount of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jezebites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God replied, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that it is I who send you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I am Pastor Kate Wolf, and I serve two small congregations in rural southeast Nebraska. I bring you greetings from them and from your brothers and sisters in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I'm glad to be with you virtually today. The movie for today's sermon is Moana. Who am I? Where do I fit in? What is my calling in life? These are big and important questions. You may find the answers easy or hard to come by. For many people, adolescence is the time when answering these questions becomes simultaneously more urgent and more complicated. Yet even as adults, we may continue to ask these questions, searching for where we belong in the world. In these days of pandemic, we suddenly found ourselves in quarantine with many things thrown into chaos. Some have lost jobs, others have lost loved ones. Some have discovered new hobbies and pastimes. Some, like teachers, have had to rapidly learn to do their jobs in a new way. And others have inadvertently become teachers, homeschooling kids while trying to accomplish their own work. Pastors have become broadcasters and video editors, as well as theologians and providers of pastoral care. People in food service and retail have become frontline workers in a way that they never signed up for. Our identities in terms of what we do and perhaps the relationships that we have are being reshaped. The things by which we used to define ourselves may no longer be the same, or indeed may no longer be there at all. We find ourselves in a liminal space, an in-between place. Things are not exactly clear, we just know that they are changing. Somehow we are moving from one thing to another. In many ways, Christianity was in such a place before the COVID-19 pandemic, and now we are even more so. The questions of, what does it mean to be church? How do we faithfully follow Jesus? Are more pressing and can seem even more challenging than before. Beyond the pandemic, Urgent conversations about personhood are taking place. In communities across the United States and around the world, people are protesting at Black Lives Matter gatherings for the right to define and claim an identity for themselves, and for that identity to be recognized as equally human, valid, and worthy of dignity and respect as any other. Similarly, during the month of June, Pride celebrations are occurring in many cities and communities as LGBTQIA people name the ways that they have come to understand their own identities and to celebrate the great diversity of people. Even as they do so, they also seek to be seen and valued as worthy of dignity, respect, and equality. Who we are is not always simple. Early in the movie Moana, the challenge of discerning identity and call becomes apparent. We meet Moana as a young child living on an island. She is attracted to the sea, which distresses her father, who is determined to keep her away from it. In one scene, Moana, as a toddler, is chosen by the sea to possess an important stone, the heart of Tefiti. She doesn't really understand what has happened, but her grandmother, who is watching, does, and she keeps the stone until Moana is old enough to assume the responsibility of returning it to where it belongs. As she grows older, Moana is expected to settle into her role as the next village chief but she still finds herself strongly and inexplicably drawn to the ocean. 
Lyrics from the song, How Far I'll Go, illustrate the growing conflict within her as she wrestles with this question of who she is and what it is that she's destined to do. I've been staring at the edge of the water as long as I can remember, never really knowing why. I wish that I could be the perfect daughter, but I come back to the water no matter how hard I try. Every turn I take, every trail I track, every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know, where I cannot go, where I long to be. I know everybody on this island seems so happy on this island. Everything is by design. I know everybody on this island has a role on this island, so maybe I can roll with mine. I can lead with pride, I can make us strong. I'll be satisfied if I play along. But the voice inside sings a different song. What is wrong with me? Conflict between her internal voice and external ones. Anguish caused by the choice between disappointing others or ignoring the increasing call that they cannot understand. Discerning calls and identities can be messy indeed. How have you defined yourself in the past, or how would you do so now? Is it primarily by external voices and relationships or an internal one? Have you striven to meet the expectations laid out for you by others? Have you defined yourself by your actions and your accomplishments, your likes and your dislikes, visible or invisible characteristics? Maybe you some of all of these. In Exodus, where we found the story of Moses, he struggles with questions of identity and call. He, though a Hebrew child, has grown up in the household of Pharaoh, understanding himself more or less to be a son of Pharaoh's daughter, certainly privileged, educated, and with plenty. And coming to the realization that he is, in fact, an Israelite, born into a slave family and abandoned in the river by his mother as an infant so that he would not be killed. He begins to struggle. He's known what is expected of him in Pharaoh's house, but now who is he? Especially when he goes out and finds a, an Egyptian slave master abusing the slaves, and without thinking, he kills him. Should he identify with the people who are the slaves or the ones who oppress them? Should he intervene on their behalf, or should he run away? It takes a long time for Moses to find his way through all of these questions and doubts, and to experience the call of God, which we hear in today's reading in Exodus 3. God lets Moses know exactly who he is. He is Moses. He is one of God's people. He is one whom God has called and set apart for a very particular task. To lead the movement to set God's people free. This was not what Moses had in mind at all. And so Moses fought this call, which, as it turns out, is not all that uncommon when people first receive a call from God. God has called Moses to do a hard thing. But Moses is not left to do it alone. He has helpers, companions on the way. As people who claim the name of Christ, God calls us deeply through our baptisms, and God calls us to hard things. It is not a simple task to follow Jesus, to forgive others, 
to pray for one's enemies, to seek the company of outsiders, and to stand against the powers that be, to be willing to change the comfortable status quo. In the moment when God calls us to these hard things, however, we receive an identity to root and sustain us through all that we are called to do. In the words spoken at baptism, we learn the core of who we are. We are beloved children of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. That is who you are. Fundamentally, deep down below all the ways that we choose to define ourselves and all the ways that others try to define us, you are a precious child of God, created in God's image. You are marked with the indelible sign of the cross, which goes with you everywhere, an invisible reminder of who and whose you are. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do that which God calls you to do, and you are gifted with a community of believers, belonging to a communion of saints with whom to live into that call and that journey together. So while we may live in challenging times and find ourselves uncertain and in the midst of change, we do so as people rooted and connected to one another by the love of God in one body of Christ. Toward the end of the movie Moana, she comes to understand through experience, reflection, and the help of others who she truly is and how to balance her internal call and external expectations. Who am I? I am a girl who loves my island. I am a girl who loves the sea. It calls me. I am the daughter of the village chief. We are descended from voyagers who found their way across the world. They call me. And the call isn't out there at all. It's inside me. It's like the tide always falling and rising. I will carry you here in my heart. You'll remind me that come what May I know the way. I am Moana, she sings. As with Moana, we have many facets to our identities, many ways of answering that question, who am I? But in the end, whatever else happens, you are a beloved child of God. You are one who seeks to follow the one who knows the way, Jesus the Christ. And we are a community on the road together. And so with that and by God's grace, you do not go alone. Amen. We enter into a time of sharing our joys and concerns with one another and lifting them up to God. We lift up prayers for continuing healing, strength, recovery from surgery and procedures. And we lift up the joy of new beginnings and the blessing of God's love. What joys and concerns do you have to lift up this day?
prayers of the people, and Lord's Prayer. Lord, we come to this time of prayer with old wounds and new hopes. We come to you bringing new anxieties and old dreams, yearning for new creation and your vision. We look to you for guidance, for solace, for challenge, and for stamina. The paths we travel in this time feel treacherous and daunting. We want to know where you would have us go and how we can find Jesus' way no matter where you send us. We need to know your near presence, God of beginnings and endings, as the summer heat deepens and the pandemic continues, we ask for your wisdom. Do not let us give in to our fears, but instead inspire us with your spirit. Show us the new things you are right now doing so that we can participate in them. In all the upheaval and pain, the loss and uncertainty, help us to see the places where this chaos is opening space for a better way of life together. Grant us the courage to not only see the cracks in the structures of our society, but the faith to repair them so as to build better communities for all of your children. God of grace and mercy, we know that with your power, mustard seed sized give, your, give way to majestic nurturing trees and unseed leaven produces more than enough bread to feed the world. We pray for those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. May our faith in you lead us to act in ways that make your relationship with us e event and discipleship transformative for others. Confident that the Spirit intercedes for us in our weakness, we ask you to guide the those in leadership positions and communities give humility and insight to those in power give voice and strength to those who speak truth to power give relief and support to those with no power we know lord of all that nothing can separate us from your love that through you all things are possible that your grace is sufficient and that your will for abundant life cannot be thwarted. We praise you for these gifts and pray that our lives will reflect their truth. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, a time of offering and a prayer of dedication. No matter how small the gift, how meager our offering feels in the face of such large needs, Jesus receives it with gladness, blesses it, multiplies it, and asks us to help distribute it to those who are hungry, weary, and hurting. This is the time when we are given the unspeakable joy of participating in God's miraculous abundance let us worship God with our morning's offer. Let us offer up our thanks to God.
We rejoice that when we give you whatever we have, you accept it. Give God thanks for it. Expand its power to provide and allow us to witness the miracles of mercy that ensue as a result. We pray that you would take these very offerings and do with them what you did in that desolate place so long ago. Feed the people, nurture people, grant relief and give those who are hurting hope and assurance that they are seen and beloved. Amen. Our closing hymn for the day is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Serve the Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the union of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah. Amen. May the peace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with you.